Here's your first warned weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit driveanderson.com. Extensive low and mid-level cloud cover throughout the majority of the day held our temperatures down quite a bit lower than even the upper 40s that were kind of expected as of yesterday. And that's still where many spots are left with in those lower 40s and even a couple of locations already down into the upper 30s. Clearing skies, though, will allow our temperatures to, again, fall a bit quicker into the night tonight. We are still left with some of that cloud cover through the later part of the evening, but generally speaking, clearing skies, allowing for many spots to fall into the low 30s, and even a couple spots into the upper 20s overnight tonight. That will lead to extensive frost and freeze conditions for the overnight hours tonight. I'll let you know how long that is expected to last in tomorrow morning and when we see a warm up on the way coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. A local high school grad and RVC student is remembered by the schools as she is laid to rest. The buses were out in her memory today. Stateline organizations are working to provide better quality of life ahead of Earth Day. How this global problem is being approached at the local level. And the growth of women's basketball has made an impact on Rockford area girls. The campus helping grow the game. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 6. Good evening, I'm Taylor Castro. Thanks for joining us tonight. A Freeport man drives himself to the hospital after he was shot early this morning. Freeport police responded to the area of Pleasant Street and West Avenue around 1.30 a.m. Shortly after arriving, authorities learned the 35-year-old victim had a gunshot wound and drove himself to the hospital. Officers found a firearm near the scene. The victim was transported to another hospital for potentially life-threatening injuries. Police say they believe this was not a random act of violence. If you know anything about the incident, contact Freeport Police or Stateline Area Crime Stoppers. School buses driving around Rockford on a Saturday in honor of a student who passed away earlier this week. Nelly Mosquierda Vasquez graduated from Guilford High School and was studying at Rock Valley College. The 22-year-old was determined and loved learning despite her autism diagnosis. She was also an avid volunteer and participated in the Special Olympics. Her funeral was held this afternoon with attendees wearing Nay's favorite color, blue. A Stateline group is helping rebuild native ecosystems one tree at a time. This morning, volunteers planted 25 oak trees at the Butterfly Farm in Orangeville. The event is organized by the University of Illinois Extension 4-H program, along with the Stevenson County Soil and Water Conservation District and the Jane Addams Land Park Foundation. Trees provide clean air and serve as a home to many animals and birds. The seeds from the um, oak trees will be acorns later on once they mature. And those acorns are food for not just um, birds, but for deer, for rabbit. And that continues to keep the life cycle going for us. Earth Day is Monday, April 22nd, followed by Arbor Day on Friday, April 26th. A Pecatonica farm welcomes community members to cuddle up with its kids. And we're not talking about human kids. Greta's Goats host baby goat snuggle sessions. The sessions are small, so everyone has some time with the baby goats. It also socializes them with, because they will grow up to be part of the milking team. For the humans, having a warm goat on their chest is calming. I think right now um, in our age, I think it connects people to not only um, the environment, um, but for what our business entails. Um, whether it's cheese making or soap making, it also connects the customer to either where their food is coming from or even where their products are coming from. Greta's Goats has been hosting goat snuggle sessions for the past four years. April is National Autism Acceptance Month. Individuals with autism or other disabilities and their families spent the day at the annual Bunny Hop. Screw City Jeeps and other community organizations held the sensory-friendly event at Don Carter Lanes. Decorated Jeeps were handing out treats, toys, and other items. There are also other fun activities like a cakewalk, thanks to Nothing Bunt Cakes and Mary's Market. Organizers say seeing the kids have a good time is the best part. In general, it's just how happy everybody is, how much it brings everybody together and wants to do this for the kids. And it's just a great time. And all, like I said, all the kids, the smiles, and them just having a good time, and it's about them. It's all about them. This year is the third annual Bunny Hop. From the most watched basketball game in history to record-breaking seasons, 
women's basketball has been making headlines. The attention has more girls looking to pick up the sport. Blake Dietz attended a training camp at the UW Sports Factory to see how the game is growing. Are we ready? Yeah! Ready, ready, go! That you can get like this many girls out on a Saturday is just awesome and it speaks to how far the game's come. Dozens of girls sharpened their skills at the elite girls basketball camp. Former Chicago Sky basketball player Allie Quigley was among the coaches. She says the excitement for women's basketball is undeniable. The biggest thing is, you know, how much they love to play. And I think when you can get girls loving, loving basketball at a young age, they have so much potential to get better and just to improve. So I think that's the biggest thing is how excited they are to be here. Superstars like Caitlin Clark and newly drafted Sky players Angel Reese and Camilla Cardoso have helped women's basketball surge in popularity. Quigley says star power draws girls in and keeps them playing. You know, them being able to know they could one day be like them is really important and that's like the biggest difference I think because when I was younger we didn't have that really to look up to and want to be like that. So. It just gets them excited at a young age. Former WNBA coach and current Chicago Sky executive Avi Story says interest is growing from girls rec leagues all the way up to the highest professional leagues. Our two draft picks, just the amount of interest that we've had in our followers on social media has been through the roof. Uh, ticket sales, uh, partnerships, things of that sort. It's been pretty incredible. Uh, but again, just the amount of girls that are participating more into sports, basketball in particular, it's been pretty incredible. He says the wave isn't stopping anytime soon. The rush, the excitement, the wave of women's basketball right now is pretty incredible. Just one of the opportunities here, like just seeing the amount of girls and the participation in girls basketball right now is at an all-time high. It's always been there, but I think what it's doing right now is really helping us grow the ball and bring more awareness to girls basketball. Is Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Blake Dietz. Greg and Holgate will have more from the camp later in sports. And sticking with sports here, how about this? Well, it was three weeks ago that Coleman Hawkins and the University of Illinois men's basketball team had their season end in the Elite Eight. But at today's Illinois spring football game, Hawkins tried his hand or foot at field goal kicking. Not only was he able to convert through the uprights from the 15-yard line, but his shoe even flew off on the attempt and almost joined the pigskin in splitting him down at Memorial Stadium today. It's been 25 years since the shooting at Columbine High School. Coming up, how the victims are still being remembered today. We have a more active week ahead with some of our rain chances as we get into the end of next week. I'll let you know just how quickly we will see those rain chances move in after our frosty mornings coming up in just a few minutes. Today marks 25 years since the Columbine High School shooting in Colorado that killed 12 students and one teacher. That teacher was Dave Sanders from El Dorado, Illinois. Also among the victims was a 15-year-old, Daniel Mauser. His father started his own tradition to honor his son. Jeremy Hubbard reports from Denver. He only wears them when he talks publicly about his son, but these sneakers worn by Daniel Mauser on April 20th, 1999, the day the 15 year old sophomore died at Columbine, have forged a path forward for his father, Tom. And it took a little while, but it started occurring to me, well, that's very symbolic. I wear his shoes. I'm walking in Daniel's shoes. You know, this is how I honor him. And really, especially when I got these shoes, the one he was wearing on April 20th, it, to me, it was like it was inspiring. It was enabling. It was, it was a spiritual thing, you know. Mauser has dedicated the last 25 years to fighting for gun control, and he successfully helped pass a ballot measure requiring background checks for all gun buyers at gun shows, closing a loophole that helped a friend of the Columbine gunman get most of the weapons used in the attack. You know, we've seen a number of, of of bills pass, but you know, none of those bills take guns away from people who are law-abiding citizens. Columbine's home school district has a renewed focus on school safety with the opening of the Frank DeAngelis Community Safety Center. Named for the school's iconic principal at the time of the shooting, it's inside an old elementary school that's been converted into a training center for more than 200 agencies who've come here for active shooter training. It gives me a lot of pride. I wish the building did not exist because of the event that happened at Columbine, 
but these events continue to happen and our officers need to be trained. In the five years it's been open, the center has trained 170,000 people. I think Columbine and being the only district with three school shootings, I think we are forced into becoming that gold standard. I think our community deserves to know that we are doing some things above and beyond just the, the general expectations around school safety to keep our kids safe. A major investment to try and ensure no father like Tom Mauser ever has to walk in his child's shoes again. I'm doing this for Daniel. I, I, I can get through this. That was Jeremy Hubbard reporting. A chilly afternoon with a lot of clouds and not a lot of sunshine. Jordan previews an even colder night and lets us know when the sun returns coming up next. Now, your first worn weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Well, very overcast day for most of us here across the state line, and that really helped to keep our temperatures a bit on the lower side. And we still are left with those clouds even here late into the evening. Our SkyTrack camera showing those off here, our SkyTrack camera overlooking Rochelle and I-88 off in the background there. And that's going to be the picture as we get in the early hours of the evening, but clearing skies as we get late into the night tonight. We see some of that clearing just off to our northwest, but still expansive low-level cloud cover in place for for many of us today and that really helped to limit how warm some of our temperatures got. We can see that pocket of cloud cover centered almost directly over the state line, keeping many of our spots in the low 40s. Downstate where there was a bit more sunshine in Springfield, 50 degrees, and that's the same case out to our west, upper 40s even in some of those spots. That cloud cover really helped to keep things a bit cooler here today, and that's where many spots are still sitting. 40 degrees right now in DeKalb, 40 in Rochelle, 41 in Rockford, upper 30s already, 39 in Freeport, Galena, and as well as 37 degrees in Monroe. Our weather watcher Terry out in Genoa also reporting a temperature right around that mark as well. 40 degrees for him along with a dew point of 26. Winds out of the west around 12 miles per hour. We continue to hold on to these cooler temperatures that will fall through the night tonight as skies clear as well. We may be left with a mostly cloudy sky through around midnight tonight, but once those skies clear out, our temperatures quickly fall down even into the lower 30s for those overnight lows. We do get some sunshine, though, that kicks off the early part of tomorrow morning, allowing for those temperatures to warm even a bit quicker for many of us. But with still that cooler overnight low, we have a widespread chance for some frost and freeze possibilities into the night tonight. The entire state line is underneath a freeze warning. In some spots, it goes into effect at midnight, other locations at 3 a.m., but it does last through around 7 or 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, depending on the location that you are in. It does not expand very far to the east as the extensive uh, low level colder air is not expected to go quite as far to the east as the lake but our areas in this shaded purple area could see overnight lows falling to around 30 degrees so make sure you have some of those plans to protect any sensitive outdoor plants and either cover them or bring them inside for the overnight hours but as I, as I mentioned briefly we do have a sunnier start to tomorrow that really helps to warm us up after the frost early in the morning temperatures do warm back to around 59 degrees for the afternoon a sunny and warmer afternoon though still a little bit breezy with winds out of the west northwest. We remain dry for Sunday and for most of Monday, but our next weather system does start to bring our next rain chances in as we get into late Monday night going into Tuesday as well. There is at least a chance for a few rumbles of thunder possible mainly Tuesday afternoon and going into Tuesday evening. This then previews a bit of a more active week ahead as we have troughing setting up across the western part of the United States. That will funnel a bunch of systems our direction, leading to a more active pattern as we get into next weekend. And that is also supported by the Climate Prediction Center outlook as we get into the 26th through the 30th favoring a much more active pattern here with higher than normal probabilities for above average rainfall during that particular time of the year. We do have some warmer weather, at least to start off the early part of next week compared to what we experienced today. 59 degrees tomorrow, lots of sunshine. 64 though Monday and Tuesday with those rain chances Monday night going into Tuesday. Even a chance for a rumble of thunder there on Tuesday before a couple drier days and then a much more active end to next week. Thanks, Jordan. Reagan's in next with sports. We've got some elite girls basketball here in the state line, and they took the court today to sharpen their skills. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. 
A lot of baseball happening today at Wrigley Field. The Cubs in a doubleheader with the Marlins after Thursday's series started with a rainout. Let's get a look at what happened in game one. Third inning here, no score. Patrick Wisdom hits the Jesus Lozardo pitch deep all the way back to the wall and two runs come across home plate and the Cubs go up to nothing. To the ninth now, Cubs up one, Adbert Alzali in to close, but then Brian De La Cruz goes yard for a two-run home run, and that's how this one will end. The Cubs lose 3-2. to two. Game two starts at 640. The Blackhawks held their post-mortem press conference this morning after Thursday night's season-ending overtime loss to the Kings. The Hawks finished with the second-worst record in hockey. That's three fewer wins and seven fewer points than last year. They were there were certainly positives, though, like Connor Bedard's immediate impact, but this team knows major improvements are needed. Here's what the rookie had to say about his first season as a pro. You know, we lost more games than, than we expected, of course, and um, so that's, that's frustrating, but... I mean, coming to the league, I, I really didn't know what to expect, and um, so I mean, it's hard, and everyone's a pretty good player, so um, you know, just getting used to that. You know, I think I, I learned a lot and, and came in with you know a pretty you know fresh mindset, I'd say, with just trying to learn. It's rare we have a professional women's basketball presence here in the state line, but that changed today with the return of the elite girls basketball camp. Over 100 eager girls came together today at the UW Health Sports Factory. Girls ages 9 to 17 took the court for this high level, high skills camp. And former Chicago Sky sharpshooter and WNBA champion Allie Quigley was in attendance as a special guest instructor. And other local coaches and college players were also there coaching the kids up. Now the girls took part in several different drills focused on improving their shooting, ball handling, footwork, and so much more. Quigley says it's camps like these that help build confidence and continue growing their love of the game. I think it's huge. That's kind of how I spent most of my childhood going to a bunch of different camps with my with my girlfriends and I was always surrounded by girls and my parents really made me feel that I could do whatever my brothers could do so I think that you know it helps to have that at home and it helps to have this for them right now just to be able to be surrounded by girls and know that they can do whatever they want to do. Seeing all girls work together um, in a way that's very unique from a, all, a co-ed camp um, they can be quite intimidating, you know, things of that sort. They feel like they're not being involved, but to see something like this and just the excitement around women's sports right now, women's basketball in particular, I think it's pretty amazing. Now the girls who attended today's camp also received a ticket for a Chicago Sky game later this summer. They will get to watch some of their favorite players in person on June 20th. The Ice Hogs continue their final weekend of the regular season with one last matchup against the top-seeded Admirals. Milwaukee leads 1-0 right now in the first. Rockford is still chasing the second seed in the division and home ice advantage in the division semifinal round against Grand Rapids. That's sports. We'll be right back. Much cloudier day today, not no rain yet though. Right, and we did <laughs> remain at least dry of precipitation and that will not remain the case as we get into next weekend more likely. So we kind of have a give and take. We get warmer temperatures next weekend, but that comes with additional rain and possibly even storm chances as well. But before we get there, we have to talk about the cooler temperatures overnight yeah, tonight. What's so with, what's with that? Not a fan of it either. <laughs> I know. Well, our average lows this time of year are really not too far away from where they actually are right now. Our average low temperature right around 40 degrees, but we are going to be falling into the 30s and below freezing overnight tonight. And the first warning interactive radar from Rockford Glass and more showing clearing sky into the night. However, we have a freeze warning that is in effect across the entire state line that goes through tomorrow morning from around 7 or 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, depending on your location as temperatures could fall to around that 30 degree mark overnight tonight. Clearing skies, though, does lead to a lot more sunshine for tomorrow and highs getting back up near that 60 degree mark. Mid 60s possible Monday and Tuesday with our next couple of rain chances. Another couple of dry days before a much more active weekend next weekend. All right, thanks, Jordan, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you at 10.